Hi, and welcome to week 12. I am Dr. Sherry Levine, your financial accounting professor. This week, we will be covering the statement of cash flows and earnings per share. First, let's take a look at the statement of cash flows. According to the Financial Accounting Standards Board codification, the primary objective of a statement of cash flows is to provide relevant information about the cash receipts and cash payments of an entity during an accounting period. The statement of cash flows provides the reader of the financial statements with details on the sources and uses of cash from the company's operating, investing, and financing activities, explains why net income differs from net cash flow from operating activities, and information regarding a corporation's ability to pay dividends. There are three main sections of the statement of cash flows and a fourth section for non-cash flow activities that are important enough to be on the face of the statement of cash flows, even though these transactions do not result in cash flow. The three main sections on the statement of cash flows are cash flows from operating activities, which arise from activities on the income statement, cash flows from investing activities, which arise from increases and decreases in non-current assets and also investments, and financing activities, which arise from increases and decreases in long-term liabilities and stock or shareholders' equity. There are two methods of preparing a statement of cash flows. FASB prefers the direct method. However, the direct method is more time consuming to prepare and therefore more expensive for clients. Thus, more companies use the indirect method for preparing the statement of cash flows. A statement of cash flows prepared using the direct method begins by subtracting cash payments from cash receipts to derive net cash provided by or net cash used by operating activities. A statement prepared using the indirect method begins with net income. Non-cash flow expenses, such as depreciation and amortization, are added back to net income. Gains are subtracted from net income and losses are added back. Changes in assets and liabilities either increase or decrease operating activities depending on the nature of the account. The result is net cash provided by or net cash used in operating activities. It is important to note that operating activities section on the statement of the cash flows is the only section on the statement that differs. In other words, the direct method and the indirect method of preparing the statement of cash flows are identical in the investing, financing, and non-cash flow investing and financing activities sections. The statement of cash flows is always prepared with the sections listed in the same order. Net cash provided by or used by operating activities, then investing activities, then financing activities, and at the bottom, net cash, excuse me, non-cash flow investing and financing activities. One way to remember the order in which the statement of cash flows is prepared is that the sections are prepared in the opposite of alphabetical order. O for operating is the last letter alphabetically, but it comes first in the statement. I for investing is the middle letter, and F for financing is the first letter alphabetically. So it's the opposite of alphabetical order. You can also remember the order of the sections by using a nonsensical term, O-I-F, pronounced oif. Or another mnemonic is, oh, I forgot, which of course you won't if you use a mnemonic to remember the sequence, O-I-F. To prepare a statement of cash flows, information is needed from the income statement and comparative balance sheets, two years to be exact. The income statement provides income statement accounts if you're using the direct method to prepare the statement. 
If using the indirect method, the income statement would provide net income, depreciation, amortization expense, and gains and losses. The comparative balance sheets provide changes in the following accounts. Assets, liabilities, common stock, and preferred stock. Note, the change in the retained earnings account does not affect the statement of cash flows. Total dividends paid to shareholders is another piece of information needed to prepare your statement of cash flows. Next, let's move on to earnings per share. The formula for basic earnings per share is net income minus preferred stock dividends divided by the weighted average number of shares of common stock outstanding. Next, diluted earnings per share. Assume all securities that can be converted to common stock are common stock to compute diluted earnings per share. If convertible bonds are converted, the earnings per share numerator increases because the bond interest expense that would have been paid to the bondholders would not have been paid and therefore net income would increase. Net income is the numerator of earnings per share. If diluted earnings per share is greater than basic earnings per share, then do not display the anti-diluted earnings per share. I will provide a video describing the process or demonstrating the process of computing basic and diluted earnings per share. Please look for that on my YouTube channel. As always, thanks for listening. I am here to help you with the course content. Please feel free to ask questions in the Ask the Professor forum in our classroom. I hope to see you in class this week. Take care.